So far, we've strongly encouraged using native elements because they give you focus, keyboard support, and built-in semantics essentially for free. But there are instances when native HTML won't cut it. The Web Accessibility Initiative's Accessible Rich Internet Application spec is good for bridging areas where there are accessibility issues that can't be managed with native HTML. I don't have time to keep saying the Web Accessibility Initiative's Accessible Rich Internet Application specification, so for the rest of the course, we'll be calling it by its much friendlier nickname, ARIA, though you'll often see it referred to as YARIA as well, which is helpful if you want to search for it. ARIA works by allowing you to specify attributes on elements which modify the way that element is translated into the accessibility tree. Let's take a look at a really basic example to show how this works. If we create a plain checkbox, we saw in lesson three that a screen reader will announce it as a checkbox, tell you its label if it has one, and tell you whether it is checked or not. And similarly, users of other assistive technologies like voice control will be able to operate it. However, what happens if for some reason we decide we really need to re-implement a basic checkbox? Well, for a start, we know from lesson two that we need to make it focusable and handle the same keyboard interactions as a native checkbox. But what happens if we then try to use it with a screen reader? The screen reader gives us no indication that the element is meant to be a checkbox. Sighted users can see the visual cues which indicate the checkbox pattern, but nothing is announced to screen reader users. Using ARIA allows us to tell the screen reader that extra information. To give you an idea how it works, let's look at this toy fake checkbox example. Just to clarify, there's very little reason you'd ever want to write code like this. You're usually much better off styling a regular checkbox. But this gives us a taste of what ARIA allows us to do. So I'll run Chromevox Lite on this page to show what things are like before we do anything. Tim Tams. Mint slices. We have a checked and unchecked custom checkbox up here. Chromevox reads out the labels Tim Tams and Mint Slices, but doesn't give us any indication that either one is a checkbox. If we compare that with the native checkbox. Tim Tams, checkbox checked. Mint Slices, checkbox not checked. Chromevox reads out the label, the role, and the checked state of each, and plays a small ear con, which is that small sound effect you might have heard at the start, to give a quick indication of the role and checked state as well. So I'm going to pop open DevTools and add an ARIA role of checkbox and an ARIA checked state to each of those custom checkboxes. So the first one gets an ARIA checked state of true, and the second one will get an ARIA checked state of false. Note that I need to explicitly specify that ARIA checked is true or false. Just adding the attribute with an empty string, like we often do with other HTML attributes, won't do the job. ARIA attributes always need to have explicit values. So now I'm going to close DevTools and start up Chromebook slide again. Tim Tams, checkbox checked. Mint slices, checkbox not checked. Tim Tams, checkbox checked. So now we can hear that there's really no difference from Chromevox's point of view between the fake checkboxes and the native checkboxes. They all sound identical. So adding that role attribute and that aria checked attribute causes the node in the accessibility tree to have the desired role and state without changing anything else about that node's appearance or behavior. In terms of the accessibility tree, what ARIA does is allow you to essentially do some tree surgery. We take the accessibility tree as generated from the plain HTML tree, add ARIA, and get a different accessibility tree. It may be subtly different or radically different, depending on what attributes we use and where. However, we need to keep in mind that this is the only thing ARIA changes. It doesn't change anything about the behavior of the element it's added to. For example, it's not going to make the element focusable or add keyboard event listeners. We still need to do the work by making sure we're keeping the promise we're making by telling assistive technology that it has that role. We'll be looking closer at what that means throughout this lesson, but I'll point out right now that it's no coincidence that we're covering ARIA after the lesson on focus and keyboard.